Welcome. I'd like to thank all of you for uh, joining us to celebrate these two important anniversaries. The Clean Water Act uh, celebrates 50 uh, years today, and New Water uh, celebrates 90 years this year. I'd like to recognize and thank the uh, dignitaries, partners, and speakers that we've had here today. Uh, Oneida Nation Chairperson Tahasi Hill, though he could not join us in person today, we want to acknowledge the important partnership that we have with the Oneida Nation. U.S. Senator uh, Tammy Baldwin, uh, U.S. Congressman Mike Gallagher, and Radhika Fox, an Assistant Administrator for Water for the Environmental Protection Agency, are going to appear via uh, recorded video today. I'd like to acknowledge some of the elected officials here today, Wisconsin Senator Rob Coles, Wisconsin Representative Christina Shelton, Wisconsin Representative uh, Joel Kitchens, Wisconsin DNR Secretary Preston Cole, Brown County Executive Troy Streckenbach, UW-Green Bay uh, Chancellor Mike Alexander, and UWGB Dean John Caters. I'd like to uh, offer also a special thank you to New Waters Commissioners uh, for their leadership uh, to our organization. I'd like to also thank uh, the many partners and collaborators that we have here today that we work with throughout the year in water who could uh, join us and join us also uh, via uh, Zoom and uh, they work with us to continually protect water. With that, I would like to introduce uh, Chancellor Alexandra and thank you to UWGB for their partnership. Thanks, Tom. It's great to be with you all today. I want to welcome you to UW Green Bay. Uh, we're very grateful to have you here. Um, I'm struck as we celebrate this year the 50th anniversary of Title IX and now also the Clean Water Act uh, anniversary that we think about the importance of uh, when, when good legislation gets passed, the, the impact it has on so many people, in this case, certainly on our environment. So uh, we're, we're proud to be here today to celebrate the Clean Water Act, to celebrate our relationship with, with new water, um, and just say a few things uh, on, on that, in that regard. So first of all, I wanna thank uh, uh, Brown County. Um, you are here uh, in the STEM Innovation Center uh, the, res the reason that we are here is because of the partnership that we have with Brown County, uh, the ability for the, uh, the university and our, uh, the Brown County government to work together to be able to make a, a structure like this happen and serve our community better, uh, both in, for the environment and obviously to put more and more people into STEM fields as we work as a university to do that. Uh, I also want to talk about our relationship as a university to the environment. So uh, we were the, obviously the initial EcoU. Uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, and uh, our campus just so happens to be literally within a stone's throw of the largest freshwater estuary in the world. Um, we should have a role in making sure that we protect, protect the amazing, na amazing natural resources that we have here in Northeast Wisconsin. Uh, it's essential to what we do is our mission as a university. That's what a university should be doing. Uh, we should be ensuring a great place to live, work, and play for the future of the residents of this region, and in some cases, our country and beyond, and with, with the resources that we have here. So we're very grateful to have you all here at UW-Green Bay to celebrate and to, uh, to talk about important issues uh, that mean very much to us as a university, and we know mean very much to our community. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll turn it over to our Dean of uh, College of Science, Engineering, and Technology, uh, Dean John Caters. Thank you, Chancellor Alexander. 50 years ago today, when the Federal Water Pollution Control Act Amendments of 1972 was signed, uh, which is now known as the Clean Water Act, a new university on the east shore of the Bay of Green Bay was actively becoming a national and international leader and becoming known as EcoU. Uh, faculty were engaged in interdisciplinary teaching and research on a range of environmental issues, with the Fox River and the Bay of Green Bay being a focus for water, uh, given the declining state of those resources at that particular time. The object, uh, objective of the Clean Water Act was to restore and maintain the physical, biological, and chemical integrity of the nation's surface waters using a water quality-based approach. It also introduced uh, the National Discharge Pollution Elimination uh, permitting system, uh, which set up permits for point sources of pollution. States were given responsibility for addressing pollution, 
with funding also provided to improve wastewater treatment infrastructure at publicly owned treatment works like New Water. Since the passage of the Clean Water Act, the level of pollution in the United States has decreased dramatically, and we've seen that right here in our own backyard, uh, where the Fox River and the Bay have become an asset as opposed to maybe a liability in terms of water quality at that particular time. However, there's still much work that needs to be done, and as Chancellor Alexander said, UW-Green Bay uh, should be leading that effort. And we do have several new initiatives that are taking place, uh, including the establishment of a new water science major and the hiring of faculty to support that program, our ongoing work to establish a national estuary and research reserve for the Bay of Green Bay, which will have a mission of research, education, stewardship, and training, and become part of a national network of 30-plus NERS uh, supported by NOAA. Additional research is also being done by our faculty on a range of point and non-point issues, uh, nutrient loading, PFAS, and other emerging environmental issues related to water. I would also note uh, UW System has made significant commitments uh, to water through the establishment of the UW Freshwater Collaborative, uh, which really brings together faculty and staff from all over UW System to work collectively on research, as well as training and educating the next generation of water professionals, uh, both scientists, engineers, policymakers, uh, for the jobs that are available today and the increasing number of jobs that are going to be available in this area in the future. So we're really excited about the efforts there. Uh, in closing, uh, the Clean Water Act was a landmark moment uh, for the environmental movement, and everyone at Green Bay uh, looks forward to what comes next as we continue to work towards that goal of restoring and maintaining the integrity of the nation's waters. With that, I would also like to congratulate New Water on their 90th anniversary, and we'll call Tom back to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Caters. So here we are today celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act and 90 years uh, for New Water serving our community. New Water's vision is and always has been protecting our most valuable resource, water. So the iconic photograph that a lot of people associate with that uh, really got the uh, Clean Water Act kicked off was the Cuyahoga River catching on fire. This uh, was probably the last time, but certainly not the first time that the Cuyahoga River caught on fire, and this was in 1969. And a number of people, a number of events across the uh, country led to the creation and the passing of the Clean Water Act. Uh, Senator Gaylord Nelson um, was involved in that for many, many years, um, but this was an iconic moment that people associate with. So New Water is a regional clean water uh, entity uh, serving uh, a greater Green Bay community. You can see in the green and the orange uh, the service area that we provide and it extends fairly uh, wide in the greater Green Bay area. Our mission is protecting uh, public health as well as uh, protecting our area waters. You can see from this photograph, it was taken a, a number of years ago, but uh, we're, we're not done. We still have work to do. Uh, when it rains uh, hard, um, and when off the ground is uh, not covered. Uh, wet weather can have significant impacts on runoff and you can see the nutrient and sediment load that makes it into our rivers and eventually into the bay. So we've made a lot of progress, but we still have work to do. New Water's uh, modern treatment facilities came online in the mid-1970s. Uh, this resulted in a significant improvement in the quality of water that we returned to the Fox River. Our utility also took full advantage of the construction grants program that was available at that time with a 75% grant and 25% local match. We were able to get a lot done uh, with the local dollars. If you look at our facilities, and this is our Green Bay facility, we also have a facility in De Pere. This is what it looks like today and what we are doing in addition to uh, producing clean water and clean air is recovering valuable resources from the water. What our customers consider to be a waste, we consider to be a raw product and we, um, a raw resource, and we then recover energy, nutrients, and other things from that water. So our finished product is clean water. Um, and we return this to the Fox River. We're very proud of it. Um, we have um, met all of our permit compliance for the uh, past 19 years and uh, uh, God willing, we'll make it for all the way through to the end of this year uh, for 20, 20 consecutive years of meeting all permit. That's our job. That's our expectation. 
but not, not very many in this country can, can meet that. We also have a role in supporting economic development in this community. In 2020, we began providing reclaimed water to Green Bay Packaging to help support their vision of an envirom environmental sustainability in a, in a brand new um, mill. We're also working on the planning for the future. We have, we still retain much of that 1975 uh, infrastructure. It is 52 years old, or 50 years old by the time we replace it, it's going to be um, much older. And that infrastructure needs to be either replaced or rehabilitated, and we are starting on that process um, right now, and it'll be done over the next 20 years. We've also looked to expand our impact on clean water. Pollution from municipal and industrial sources that was prevalent in the 1960s and 70s has been significantly reduced due to the Clean Water Act. New Water is working now to reduce pollution from stormwater. An example of, you see here on this photograph, is a field with multiple best management practices that have been applied uh, with New Water's help um, by the farmer to reduce the amount of runoff of sediment and other nutrients. Uh, what we saw with COVID-19 uh, is that the pandemic enabled science to provide an early warning system to our communities of infections such as COVID-19 and now uh, polio, and who knows what it's going to be like for the next one. Um, and that's done through wastewater analysis. Um, we've been able, with proper work, to get a week or two weeks um, of, of early warning before the testing starts to show up in individuals. New Water participates in this program with the scientists at UW-Milwaukee. And finally, um, the, the goal of the Clean Water Act was to create fishable and swimmable waters. Quoting uh, EPA Assistant Administrator Radhika Fox, we hope that the next 50 years will make waters fishable and swimmable for all. No matter what your economic status is, no matter what your zip code, uh, we want everyone to be able to have access to fishable and swimmable waters, and that's going to be our goal. With that, I'm going to uh, introduce at the front end three speakers who are going to appear to you via uh, recorded video. We have uh, EPA Assistant Administrator for Water, Radhika Fox, uh, U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin, and U.S. Uh, Representative Mike Gallagher. So I'll turn that over to the group. Hello, New Water. Congratulations on your 90 years of continuous service. Our communities would be less healthy, less vibrant, and less resilient without the essential service that wastewater utilities like New Water provide each and every day. And much of the progress we've been able to make nationwide has been because of the Clean Water Act, which is turning 50 today. Before the Clean Water Act was passed with overwhelming bipartisan support, our waters were virtually unprotected from pollution. Rivers ran in colors, rivers caught fire, bays could no longer support aquatic life, and people actively turned away from our waters. Since the Clean Water Act has passed 50 years ago, we've seen transformative change, change so monumental that the realities of the 1960s and 70s sound impossible to us today. In Wisconsin, we've been able to see examples of this from water quality improvements in Bass Lake to nearly six miles of Pleasant Valley Branch in Dane County being repaired. Over the past year, I've had the honor of visiting and spotlighting Clean Water Act success stories in every region of the country, from Chesapeake Bay to Puget Sound. And what incredible successes these are. Aquatic life has returned to the waters that were once forsaken. Utilities are providing more advanced wastewater treatment. People are returning to the water. But our work is not done. All of us together <clears throat> are the stewards of the next transformational moment for our nation's waters, and we're building off the strong legacy the Clean Water Act charted. 
In another 50 years, it's our goal to ensure our children and our grandchildren have a clean, safe water, no matter the color of their skin, their zip code, or income. Our businesses and cities will be powered by the clean water resources they need to thrive and support good paying jobs. Our farmers will feed the nation while finding innovative ways to maximize water consumption. Thank you, New Water, and thank you, Tom Sigmund, for the partnership in meeting our shared goals, and happy anniversary to the Clean Water Act. Hello, I'm Senator Tammy Baldwin, and I'm excited to join all of you for this great celebration of water. First, I want to say happy 90th birthday to New Water. For the past 90 years, New Water and its many partners have worked together in Northeast Wisconsin to clean and treat our water sources and ensure our communities have access to quality water. As we also celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act, we must recognize the continued responsibility we have to restore and preserve the chemical and biological integrity of the region's waters. And though there are many challenges that our water quality faces, like pollution, invasive species, and the growing threat of climate uh, change, we have an incredible community of people who come together to care for the health of our Great Lakes and safeguard the future of our region. We also have dedicated leaders like Tom Sigmund, who has led new water with the innovation of quality and clean water solutions. Lastly, I want to commend all the staff members who work around the clock to ensure our residents and families have access to the essential water services they need to live healthy lives. Improving our water quality is truly the work of local and regional leadership, and I want to thank each of you for doing your part to ensure our Great Lakes have a better future. Because of the great leaders, partners, and staff at New Water, we have come so far in protecting our nation's most valuable resource, water. And as your partner in the Senate, I'm proud to keep working alongside you to ensure our water resources stay protected and our Great Lakes remain preserved for generations to come. Hey everyone, Congressman Mike Gallagher here. I would like to apologize that I'm not with you in person this morning, but I'm honored to be able to speak uh, about the important anniversary for new water and the Clean Water Act. Uh, here in Northeast Wisconsin, we know the importance of our waterways, from clean drinking water to sportsmanship on our lakes, rivers, streams. Our waters are absolutely a critical part of our economy and our way of life. And I like to think that's why here in Northeast Wisconsin, we've been taking our water quali uh, quality seriously through new water and other initiatives for more than 50 years. Uh, for new water in particular, this is a tradition that's nearly as old as the Green Bay Packers. Uh, when New Water opened its doors in the 30s, it treated 2.5 million gallons of water each day. Now that capacity has increased to 41 million gallons. And in the years since, New Water has continued to pursue additional projects that were not only innovative, but extremely effective at protecting our waters. Uh, building on its years of success, Today, New Water is still leading our state and nation in water quality issues with an adaptive, manage, adaptive management program that works collaboratively with farmers in Silver Creek, Dutchman Creek, and Ashwaubenon Creek watersheds to support conservation farming practices to reduce runoff and keep phosphorus on the farm field. So uh, this is truly incredible work. It's been extremely helpful to me in Congress to be able to watch this work, to learn from you. Since I came into Congress in 2017, New Water has been a huge help uh, with my Save the Bay initiative, and we've worked together to champion common sense conservation reforms. And while I could continue to talk about the long list of successes that New Water has seen over the years, I know that's not the only reason you're gathered here today. Today, we're also here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act, which, as you all know, played a tremendous role in the cleanup of the Lower Fox River and the Lower Menominee River. So between the local work by New Water here in Northeast Wisconsin and then the federal improvement made by the Clean Water Act, We've made progress. We've made tremendous progress in safeguarding the Great Lakes and protecting our groundwater and other freshwater sources for generations to come. So it's my hope that in the years ahead, Congress will continue to recognize the importance of these issues by funding GLRI uh, through Farm Bill conservation programs that protect our freshwater resources and promote soil health. 
and other critical programs. Um, you know, I look forward to continue supporting NERR's efforts to preserve the world's largest freshwater estuary and monitoring legislation on contaminants such as PFAS that may result in unintended consequences to water utilities and other public entities. Uh, so I just would like to thank Tom and his staff for their leadership, uh, for their dedication, uh, for their commitment to the people and waters of Northeast Wisconsin. And I really look forward, uh, forward to continue working with all of you to protect Wisconsin's natural resources going forward. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much to our three national speakers who came on, provided their perspective. I'd now like to introduce Senator Rob Coles, um, and I'd like to thank Senator Coles for his continued partnership with the environment to protect the environment as well as valuable uh, water resources in his roles. Senator Coles. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Tom. And Congratulations, New Water, on the 90th anniversary of your institution. And thank you, federal legislators, Ed Muskie, Gaylord Nelson, and many others that I'm not familiar with. And some of us were talking earlier, trying to remember 1972, and we didn't remember it that well, exactly what happened. But those federal legislators overrode a veto of the president in the middle of an election. So what foresight those federal legislators had in 1972 to pass the Clean Water Act. So happy anniversary, Clean Water Act 50th, and happy anniversary and 90th for, for New Water, which was Green Bay Metro for many years. So today, all these leaders back here and all of you out here, we stand on the shoulders of past commissioners, water pollution engineers, EPA talented staff, DNR talented staff, who invented and perfected processes to clean industrial and municipal waste water. They didn't know how to do it back then. They had to invent it and perfect it. One of those, forgive me for being a little shameless, my own father, who was an engineer who did paper engineering and worked on paper mills throughout the nation at, as vice president of Marathon Engineering. He was involved in the industrial side. And, Thanks, Dad, for all that effort. And there were many conversations at breakfast when I didn't really know what the heck he was talking about, but it had an impact on me. Water quality improvements since those early days have been a tremendous success story with many leaders, like Tom Sigmund here, and his predecessors, managing Green Bay Metro and now New Water. Professor John Caters over to my, my left, and his predecessors for helping to educate the next generation of passionate students and to maintain what we've achieved in water quality and go beyond. I would re be remiss if I did not salute the vision of Chancellor Ed Widener, who had the vision of EcoU way back then, and the great professors, some that I had and some that I didn't, Dr. Jack Day, Dr. Bud Harris, and many others that came in with Dr. Widener and created this institution. Through their teaching efforts, there are now UWGB graduates throughout the nation helping to solve environmental problems, water quality problems, and more coming. Of course, as Dr. Cater said, there are relatively new challenges in water quality and many other things, but I am optimistic with Dr. Cater's and other professors here, those students will be leading the way once again and helping solve our problems. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Coles. Um, I'd now like to introduce uh, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Secretary Preston Cole. I'd like to thank him for his leadership, his visionary approach to watershed work uh, in order to protect water. Secretary Cole. I guess I'll do it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, New Water and Clean Water Act. Happy birthday to you. I'm doing two shows tomorrow night downtown Green Bay. Give at the door, give early, and give often. Thank you, folks. My name is Preston Cole. I'm here on behalf of Governor Tony Evers, who's busy and out on the road as we speak. 
These are important times in our history in the state of Wisconsin that we give praise to and take a look back at what it used to look like. Grassy raceways, 10,000 acre and a 20,000 acre research on farmland to determine how to slow down the water before it gets into the bay. Pulling small phosphorus, creating phosphorus pills, and then selling them on the second market to keep phosphorus from getting into the bay. It's all about the science, but it's also about farmer-led initiatives. It tells a story about the men and women inside of New Water. It talks about the science, it talks about the innovation, and it talks about an organization who is hell-bent on providing clean water to its residents and those who visit here. And I'll talk momentarily about how special we have the opportunities for clean water right here. So Tom, I've been watching New Water for quite some time, and regulators don't usually say this. We love what New Water is doing on the landscape, we honor them, we try to uh, work together in partnership, but they are natural born leaders in terms of clean water. It's exciting for us to see the type of work that they're doing on the landscape to protect the human health for folks who live in this region, the businesses, and all those who visit Wisconsin. So during the first years of the Evers administration, he declared the governor, 2019, about the year of clean drinking water indicating his priorities about the resource. So when we landed, there were many communities around the state that didn't have surety when they turned their faucets on that they would have access to clean drinking water. Whether it was our legacy cities that uh, had lead laterals or rural Wisconsin encumbered by nitrates getting into their wells or dilapidated and broken wells, we knew that we had work to do and we began in earnest to turn the dial to protect the human health, but also our economy around clean water. When it comes to water in our great state, it's home to 84,000 miles of rivers and streams, 15,000 lakes, 5 million acres of wetlands, 800 miles of Great Lakes shoreline, 190 miles of Mississippi River shoreline, and two quadrillion gallons of groundwater. Wisconsin is number three in the country from out-of-state fishing license sales. People show up here to fish. Why? Because they can trust the aquaculture uh, community that we have, whether you're getting on a boat with a charter captain or you have a local tour guide or you roll into Green Bay and want to get out and catch the biggest fish known to mankind. Our economy, that lift of outdoor recreation, it's an $18 billion lift consumer spend in the state of Wisconsin. You have to ask yourself, would people continue to come if you can't drink the water? That there's always fish advisories in neighborhoods and communities. Would they show up here? What we're protecting is not only the environment and clean water. We're protecting our outdoor uh, resources and outdoor opportunities the money that people leave behind in Green Bay and Rhinelander and Racine and La Crosse, when they go out and spend money in those little towns and hamlets to do their fishing, to do their outdoor recreation, to drink the water, to drink the beer, and leave a lot of money behind, we have a lot more at stake in protecting though that clean water. And so it's about the science, and the DNR is science in motion. See, it shouldn't, it shouldn't go unnoticed that we are at a STEM facility. So for the director, the chancellor, your work in providing young minds, and we're hiring at the DNR, by the way, in ensuring that the product that you put out on the street gives us surety there is a generation of individuals that will be challenging, uh, will, that we will challenge to continue that lift on clean water and what we do for the economy of the state of Wisconsin. So, with natural resources like this, it's easy to see why Wisconsin is one of the first states to, to gain approval to implement the Clean Water Act 
on behalf of the EPA. Thank you, Senator. Children today don't know about benzene, atrazine, toluene, dioxin, and we have robust groundwater laws in the state of Wisconsin. We've removed off the landscape 138 chemicals under the Clean Water Act and our groundwater laws. That's a big deal for the economy and the human health of folks here in the state of Wisconsin. And just one year after the Clean Water um, Act was passed, neighborhoods, states, regions, one united effort in the, uh, in the United States to protect our clean water. Well, today we can't get on the same page on anything but clean, clean water. We should be proud of the fact that people continue to show up early and on, honestly in neighborhoods and in our community to protect the water. Everything else aside, people show up. And it's not just a thing of the past, as I had mentioned. Governor Evers is committed to clean water to ensure Wisconsinites continue to be a leader in protecting water quality, not here only, but around the world. And that's where the STEM education and the science in motion plays a part. Through partnership like ours and with New Water, we make it possible to keep our natural resources special and protected. We're also we're, uh, excited about the local communities to disperse hundreds of millions of dollars of new funding made available through the bipartisan infrastructure law. Absolute game changer. So 49 of my colleagues, we get together often to talk about what this ultimately means, this type of infrastructure improvements. So we are honestly right now at work deliberating with contractors, cities, towns, and villages, and how we're going to spend the money. And so for communities like Green Bay, Racine, La Crosse, as we had mentioned before, those may be challenged by lead laterals or PFAS in their drinking water. This revenue will allow organizations to clean up hazardous water systems, near shore areas that are contaminated by our legacy contaminants from industries gone by the wayside and get back to business of clean water. This once in a generation opportunity will help communities upgrade failing infrastructure that's critical to protecting water quality for the future generations. Look, children that are not born will appreciate the work that new water folks in this room are doing and it can't go unnoticed that we are not alone. We have senators, we have legislators, congressmen and women, certainly uh, the president in the White House, and a governor who cares about clean water for all. And that makes me excited. So what are we going to do? We're going to put on our hard hats. We're going to go to work. We're going to go to every city, town, and village that have issues with water, and we're going to solve that damn problem. We're going to solve it much like new water has solved many of the problems here, right here in the near shore area of Green Bay. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Governor Evers and myself, Thank you. Happy birthday, Clean Water Act. Thank you, Secretary Cole. I'd now like to introduce uh, Brown County Executive Troy Streckenbach and thank uh, Troy for his partnership over the many years with uh, people in this community to uh, provide clean water. Troy. Well, I don't know, uh, you know, you oftentimes hear the, you know, the last person, I don't know how I speak after what you just heard, because you heard a lot of great things from a lot of good people and who truly care about uh, uh, new water and the Clean Water Act and what it's done. And so I'm just going to kind of take a little step back and say congratulations, Tom, and your staff and everybody that works in within new water to provide the community that assurance um, that water is not going to be coming up into their basement, uh, that the infrastructure is available to make sure that we're all moving our community forward and we have access to clean and reliable water, uh, to the Clean Water Act, uh, to challenge in us, because 
you think about it, 50 years ago, did they know what the technologies and the issues that were going to be before us today? Probably not, but they knew that there was an opportunity to engage the future to protect a precious resource. And so my own little journey, I, you know, I've been in this office for 11 years. Someone would say I'm now a career. Uh, but the reality is I was just a general average citizen who loved to go up fishing and I'm not going to tell you the streams that I fish were trout, but uh, up in somewhere in Ocano, uh, and I took it for granted that I was able to throw a line out and I was able to catch a trout um, and take that back and enjoy it for dinner. I also took it for granted that when I operated my many businesses or a few businesses, um, that we had access to water for our customers really never understood the infrastructure, never really understood that there was a backhaul that really put together this system that allowed us as citizens, businesses, individuals in the community, whether or not we're visiting, to kind of take things for granted. And I would say that in my own little journey, um, in time in this community, especially as a county executive, I, I'm looking up at LANCON people, I'm looking over at my extension Brown County people that work. I get the uh, enjoyment of working together. And I would say that the purpose of this building is around this idea that we need to come up with the next generation solutions to protect water, to protect our environment, to land management. You know, how do we work with our agriculture community to have better land management practices that ultimately end up in the bay? How do we get, and I see our 4-H, how do we get young kids with young minds to think about the future? How do we get them engaged in STEM practices, science, technology, engineering, math, and get them to think about, whoa, upstairs is the engineering school. This Lego robot can convert and change and make something in the future that will solve global problems, because we know food security and water are going to be global issues. They're already global issues. And what the spark is, and what I want to say to New Water in this 90th birthday celebration, is thank you. Thank you for giving our community the opportunity to be leaders, and more importantly, to allow our university to be a partner in developing the future solutions so that those solutions are created right here with our young minds and then those ideas then are exported out to the rest of the world to solve their own global issues with our brown water this building this research park which we hope in the future will be made up of individuals with the support of the federal government because a lot of the money that we receive is coming through from the federal government through the state when we think about the Lower Fox demonstration farms, those are all really cool aspects of things that an average citizen of Brown County loves to enjoy, whether it's going out fishing, fishing which in Brown County, it's a $250 million spend that we enjoy for our, the, the access to water. Access to water, not everybody gets that privilege. And right here, because of our partnerships and because of the leadership of New Water and because of the foresight of the Clean Water Act, we as a community are making a change. And we as a community look forward to seeing what happens with the NUR and what happens with the engineering school. In the end, I hope that in 90 years, which I'm hoping I'm not alive, but someone that came from this university was able to come up with something that's being used in Africa or in some other part of the world. And that idea was generated here because of the foresight of individuals before us, because of the leadership of today's leadership, and the fact that we have a great university, the Coastal University, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and in the end, we are making a community better, stronger, and more uh, resilient. And with that, happy birthday, New Water, on this 90th day anniversary.
Thank you, Troy, and thank you to all the speakers for the kind words um, for both New Water and uh, the progress of the uh, Clean Water Act. So for those online, we'd like to also thank you as well as those that came here in person. Um, we'd like to thank you for coming. Um, I'd like to make a shout out to my staff. In addition to our commissioners, the staff at New Water uh, does just a fabulous job and they are very committed and talented individuals to make this happen. So thank you to our staff. So with that, we'll bring this to a conclusion. For um, all those in the room, we have some refreshments in the back. And uh, thank you again.